What do you think? Well, do you have any thoughts since our last lesson? Like, did something stick? Well, actually, I mean, like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, conceptually, yeah, but also, like, um, just when you were talking about, like, asking, like, hey, do you ever enjoy anything about your playing? What do you think about that? And then after that, there's a couple times where I joined some things about my playing, oh. and I meant that I played less all the time because I wasn't, like, you know, uh, judging and, like, looking for what I was going to fuck up next while I was playing. That's good. That, like, it kind of enabled me to, like, slow down and actually, like, kind of, like, enjoy the music, which has been something that's been absent for, like, about a year. Yeah, I mean, I was this. I was looking at, um, like, this, you know, Fine and Mellow, I think I showed it to you, like, yeah. it's like the Billie Holiday thing with, like, like I think it's 1950-something, and it's, like, all these great jazz guys, and, like, just look at, look at that up on YouTube, look how much fun they're having, Yeah. you know what I mean, like, it's not even, like, fun, because it's, like, we think about fun, like, her, her, like, you know, yeah, like, a ridiculous all. version of fun, like, a real childish one, but, like, adult digging what they're, adults do, digging what they're doing in a profound way. It's, like, you know, they make a sound, and they're just, like, mm, right? It's just, yeah. like, it's tasty, you know, and they're, they're not afraid to really be in that space of, you know, just doing something you dig. I think that's that's a really powerful mind space to to be in. I mean, not to where like you know, you're like just like orgasming over yourself. Yeah. That's not the point. But it's just like constantly like you know, be in the zone. Um, cool. Well, let's let's check that out in practice. Let's see if we can replicate something um, that would make you feel that way now. Uh, I know that's always the hard part, isn't it? So, what do you want to play? What, what, or what did you play that you feel like you had moments like that? Uh, I, I don't remember. I was just what do you? Th what do, What's? What do you know well enough to where it's like likely to happen at some point? Like what kind of form? What kind of song? Uh, we could do Georgia. Let's do Georgia. E flat. Yeah. Cool. How, How fast? Uh. I don't like. A one, two. Thank you. 
hand there. Whew. <laughs> ah, landed on that accident. Anyways, um, I probably should have not soloed and just talked about your solo right away. A lot of parts of it felt better. You know, also yeah, like, you know, yeah. like, like, no, it felt good. Like a lot of parts were like, I could tell you're trying to do the right stuff. For me, the transitions where you're going to play like a faster thing, I almost hear like a clock in your head going like, it's time to play a faster thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I hope, I hope it's time to play some, I, you know, I hope I didn't play slow too long. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? So I think it's an exercise, because there's a time and a place to do that. I do that. Um, so I would say as an exercise, try to just play the melodic stuff. The melodic, the, the floaty stuff where you're just kind of playing the melody to me felt great. Actually, the beginning of that solo was really good until that first fast line that just kind of felt forced. You know, mm -hmm. so the transition between slow and fast playing needs to be, things need to come from your subconscious. Mm -hmm. Things need to come from like, if you're able to sort of imagine them on the form, the, the connections are going to be smooth. If you are, if it's coming from this idea of like, oh shit, it's time to do something impressive. Yeah. It's like, it's the most unimpressive thing, you know? And for me, I just, I don't know, like, I don't know if I hear that or not. Only you know what's in your mind but I really feel like I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do, when you're looking at it honestly, do you think that's kind of the thing that happened, or? Oh, 100%, well, because it was, like, uh, super blocky, you know? It wasn't like, oh, here's, like, a slow part going into a fast part that, like, creates some tension and results to something sweet again. It's just, like, you know, melody, melody, ah, melody, melody, you know? Right, so I think that's, but that's, that's the thing to identify. It's like, you know, um, like the point of me telling you this is not so you're like, you know, I'm not kicking you in the balls to teach you to kick yourself in the balls. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the idea is like, oh, this is a thing I do, right? This is like a nervous tick, mm -hmm. right? It's like, now that I know that this nervous tick is happening, maybe I could be, like next time I feel it coming on, the antidote to that is to just keep riding the thing you're doing. Because the thing you're doing over time, if you play a lot of choruses, practice a lot, you're go it's going to tell you where it wants to go, right? It's like the slow playing will eventually just naturally want to lead into more dense rhythm. What I mean is like if I'm going like... It really felt like the right time to do that. But there were many opportunities. I could do a rhythm like that on every, I could start like that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to sort of wait until I really feel like, ooh, like the, this is, it's, it's sort of like the feeling that that's the right thing to do. And if you're sort of, if you're patient with it, then, uh, then I feel like it will it will just start start manifesting itself in the right places in the form, and I think f when you're a little bit far from it, it seems like you might be thinking it's like how should I start a fast line on beat two? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Should I do it on the G seven? It's like you're you're looking for like these clues in the rhythm and in the harmony, where in fact it's just about you know developing this kind of natural way of singing on a form, right? Mm. Uh, so that's 
criticism one, criticism two, I have unintentionally made you into a pussy with your right hand. Like your rhythms when you're playing behind me, you're f like you want you want to put your sound underneath me, but you're not making a nice texture okay. with the ballad. You know, it feels like really kind of like held back in a way. And it's just like, you gotta work on just getting that. Like a real even kind of motion that's not scared of the strings, mm. right? So try that, let's try that real quick. So even, I think one thing you should do is try to get rid of two and f of the end of those, uh -huh. those anticipation. Yeah, ta, it's, just ta, 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 it's like, you know, you're playing kind of like, I'm not, there's no, I wouldn't even know how to put that in. Uh -huh. So it's just downbeats with like real slow balance. And like, if you're doing that, it's kind of like, it's definitely not just the top strings, right? It's, it's not, it's kind of a slow, right? It's like, imagine it pulling through an entire snare drum slowly. It's not, yeah. it's not that, it's, right? A brush, but get rid of them. You don't need them for that, this kind of texture. Just one, two, three, four, and really focus playing big chords so look at the chords I'm playing here for Georgia I'm playing this E flat 6 9 with that note clear as day I'm gonna play this mm -hmm. you hear five notes coming up so you're going that yeah. chord is you know I'm, I'm doing this uh-huh yeah oh my god look at look at you struggling <laughs> I love it yeah. Yeah. And then this. So it's like a C, 9, 13. Yeah. But I'm getting both the bass notes. Oh, jeez. That's right. All right. And then... So see, look at how I'm fingering this. Yeah, I know. I have a hard time getting both of those notes. All right. So let's, let's, let's work on that. So you're having a hard time because of where you're putting your index finger. I press the index finger kind of on the fifth fret, uh, okay. right behind that one, just for convenience. Just to, so this finger kind of goes down yeah. here, and this one's pressed in between those two, and this one just flattens, right? Right, and it's, I see that like your instinct is to like kind of play with the elbow. Oh, it's yeah. just straight, right? That, that grip. There you go. These are, these are some big chords. So, yeah. Yeah, you need to get, do, do your Kegels. Let that, <laughs> loosen up that the JJ. Uh, so, it's uh, like, the big chords and the ringing of each note is the real secret for playing these ballads well because you're making you're dragging that brush across the snare drum but that's the snare drum uh-huh you know what i mean this is not the snare drum it's like right. the drum you're activating it's kind of like as you're pressing down on it you're making the drum each chord is its own sort of snare drum that opens up and you got to just make a nice brushy you know texture through those notes if you have a lot of muted stuff or not enough note information it's not going to ring out right so very intentional like you can have a dead note like this g doesn't have anything on the a and i'm playing through it but it gets swallowed up right now, also, the, the other thing I would say is try to activate the bass side of the guitar just as much as the treble side. Mm. So you, 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 you don't want to, like, get to the treble side too quickly. Right? If you slow. 
It's more focused on the bass side than the treble side. Right? You're making, you're trying to make a thick texture. These, these four strings are the heroes of the show. If I'm playing like... Nuage like we did last week. Right, not right. So it makes it like thin and brittle. Um, so let's try Georgia again, comp like that. A uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, you're yeah. So this. Your, the angle should, I, I see you're trying to put those upstrokes in and it's creating this thing where you're tilting, yeah. you're supinating your wrist outwards. None of that, just no upstrokes. It's gonna be a little foreign. So let's just try it together. If I'm doing the up, I'm noticing that if I'm doing like an offbeat, I'm just doing another downstroke. Especially slower than that. Hmm. Just a click on dead strings. And you don't even need it. So try to play beautiful. Like the, I think that what for you, what's gonna really help is trying to play beautiful, like on the beat time, with just these clear as day chords. Right. Let's try to play. Something you know super well, like um, all of me, mm -hmm. as a ballad, right? Just to do that, like. Just making the chords kind of change double time. So for a lot of this, you just gotta figure out some five note voicings for everything yeah. you're doing. I think you're really in that four note, like you have a lot of five note to four note voicing things happening in your playing. Yeah. And that tends to be the way you play really fast, right? Like if I'm playing minor swing, like or dark eyes, what people call shell voicings, like three note voicings and even two note voicings become much more part of the vocabulary because, you know, it just, it makes it heavy to play a ton of notes. Right? <laughs> That's fine for that kind of playing, but if it was in this tempo, mm -hmm. it's okay, but it feels a little bit like not the best thing you could be doing. Even I'm, I'm in this area, I'm just trying to. So when I'm, if you take a chord, you know. Just look around in the mode. Look for stuff that works. Like you have this one. Uh -huh. Okay, play that D minor. So you can get that A involved just by flattening right here. This A. Yeah. The bass note. It, this is the tricky thing to grab, but you okay. can do it, right? You can also grab other stuff. You can get that G on top. Right? You can alter some, you can just swap out some notes, get like a big, just D minor nine with like a fifth on top. Um, that's about it. <laughs> you, can, you can put the third right here, obviously. Play these kind of. Just like a D, oh, yeah. D minor six with an 11 on top. All these things are, again, they're not, they're, they're just options to thicken the sound, right? So if I'm going like. You can hear it for a second. 
that not that not that might not be the best sound for that thing but just for practice getting used to grabbing as much as you can with dominant chords there are more options because they have you know all these tensions on top so like if I have this E7 let's say I'm playing all of my or minor swing doesn't matter uh, you know I have this E7 flat 9 make that a five note thing. I have so many options. I can go with, I can use a flat 13 on top. I can use a five on top. Mm -hmm. I can use a sharp 11 on top. It's coming from altered, right? So if I'm playing some sort of ballad that has that, like all of me is a ballad. And then going to I want you to practice the rhythmically, just go, using the quarter notes. It's so built into your playing that upstroke. How much do you think that grooves? Learn. Scale on one to ten. <laughs> yeah, it's, t it's tough. I really have a hard time like bringing so, the bass. So yeah, uh, you don't need to be so pedantic about about the uh, that stuff. Is more subtlety. The motion takes care of it. Just get the motion right. Make it look right. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Just visually look at how I'm doing it, and then just do that thing with your hand eventually it will come out what you need to really worry about is the sound you're getting with dead strings how well you're playing drums on the guitar 